How's it going guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros. And if you're like me, you're getting really tempted by all the Black Friday sales for new processors out there. The newer i7s are on sale for $100 off, $150 off, and it's really tempting to pick one up. However, you gotta pay for a whole new motherboard socket, RAM type nowadays with the new uh, Skylake platform, and it's just, it's a whole big expense. So let's say you have an i7 2600K, an i5 2500K, or even something above that, and you really, do not have the money to upgrade and you really just want to get extra performance, this video is going to show you all how to upgrade your CPU without actually upgrading it. We're going to be overclocking. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to overclock your CPU. And this isn't really something that's universal. It's kind of different based on your motherboard manufacturer, but this is something that it should be somewhat similar throughout the whole process. So. <laughs> first is restart your PC and as soon as it restarts you're going to want to hit F2 which is my key it depends on which one it is but you have to figure out which is you can look at your motherboards manual it'll tell you how to get into your computer's BIOS so once you get into your BIOS you see right here I have a UEFI setup so it's a GUI interface it makes it so much easier for me to get around so what we're going to do is go into the easy tool right here that says overclock tweaker now, right now I have my processor set to 4.4 GHz and that's been very stable for me. So in this video, we're going to test it and try to push it to its bare limits and see what we can get it to. So as of right now, it is at 4.4 GHz. And there are options right here that are presets that allow you to overclock right on the board preset. Just hit the button and go. So we have 4.4 GHz right now and there's a possibility that we could get it up to 4.8. That's the biggest barrier right there. The odds are that, that this will actually work are very limited because my processor may not be of the higher tier to be able to make it work. Only a few i7s out there can make it above 4.6. I've seen some 2600Ks that made to 5 gigahertz, which is crazy ridiculous. But if I could get this at 4.8, it'd be pretty crazy. So we're gonna set this at 4.8. Everything should be set to auto because it should auto fill automatically. It is best to go through and customize it to your liking and make sure it's what you want. Um, keep in mind that this video, I have no responsibility for what to do to your processor. You can cause damage to your processor by overclocking sometimes, so be careful when you do so. But we're going to go ahead and basically see if I can even get this thing to boot at 4.8 gigahertz. So let's just sit back and see what we got here. Odds are this thing is not even going to boot, but we're just going to see what it can do here. So we are loading up in the menu right now, and we are frozen. So we're basically frozen on the Windows start screen, and that kind of gives you a little bit of a hint there that this is probably not the most stable overclock in the world. So I'm going to give this a minute to see if it fixes itself, but if it keeps hanging, I might as well just go ahead and reboot it. Okay, it just rebooted itself anyways. Okay, so we're gonna go back into the BIOS real quick. Let's hit up F2. Um, I know that, that sound effect from my BIOS is so interesting. So let's go to Overclock Tweaker. 4.8 is not gonna work really well. Let's try 4.6 and save changes and exit. We'll see if we can boot in with 4.6. Now, overclocking is really a guess and check game. You just gotta kinda add more voltage. You wanna not go overboard with it. Um, for some reason, my PC wants to do automatic repairs now, which I do not want it to do, so please reboot. Um, sometimes the Windows is going to be really iffy with this, and you're going to have a lot of issues. Um, let me see. It may have reset. Let me make sure. Okay, we're still at 4.6. Let's save changes and reboot. Now, this is a very tedious process. You have to keep that in mind while you're doing this. But sometimes your Windows is going to be kind of iffy, and it's going to try to do some weird stuff. Um, but if I can get this to boot at 4.6 GHz, that means I have an increase of 2 GHz so far. So it's very, uh, 0.2 GHz. Shit, if I went out by 2 GHz, that'd be pretty insane. So, yes, it boots right now. But you want to keep in mind that there are chances that it can crash. So what you're going to want to get is a, sta a stability testing software. So right now I have real temp. Now real temp will basically give me the best possible scenario as far as what my temperatures are at. So I'm not sure if you'd be able to see this, but right now my temperatures are at 58 degrees Celsius and I'm hovering around 4.6 gigahertz. Now this is running pretty toasty with my Hyper 212 Evo, so it's kinda, it's running pretty high. So we're gonna try to 
bench this mofo and see what we can get out of this. So we're going to load this thing down while everything in the background in the world is trying to load. Okay, that's not what I want. I wanted to do a sensor, not a sensor test. No, okay, cool. Yeah, it's cool. No, my goodness. We got so many things going on here. This is why you shouldn't do this on boot up. It's really not the best scenario for this. Uh, we need a CPU. Yeah, CPU ID always works too. CPU ID is a processor. Processor and computer component like detector. It basically shows what you have going. Um, the best thing to do for this actually, they actually have an onboard bench that allows you to test your um, stress and test your CPU in comparison to other CPUs. So what I'm going to do is close out. A, I'm going to keep real temp up to make sure that things aren't overheating at all, and we're going to stress the CPU. Now, as you can see right here, we're at 4.6 uh, gigahertz right now, and we're just going to let this run on full load and make sure things don't get too hot. So right now we're at 73 degrees Celsius, 72, which is on the high end for a CPU, really. It shouldn't really be getting that high, but I mean, it's functional. And the cool thing about CPU-Z is you can use this as a reference between other processors. So if you want to reference this up against a 5960X, which is a $1,000 CPU, you can tell that this thing really is not going to come close to it because it's a $1,000 CPU. But when you compare it to, let's say, a 6700K, it's a lot closer, which the gap really isn't worth it in reality. Um, so we got 6700K, we got i7. This is like a laptop grade i7, so it really doesn't make a difference. Um, 4790K, which is another i7, it's really close, and this is actually a very stable overclock. I'm actually impressed with it being at 4.6 um, gigahertz. But what I'm going to do is go download some more CPU benchmarking utilities, and I'll be right back, and I'll show you all those. All right, so I realized when I was doing the stress test is I really didn't get the best quality image from the view that I had. So what we're going to be doing here, as you can see, this is real temp. This is the temperatures that my CPU are running at right now. At it's basically idle speed of like 2.4 gigahertz. That's what it does, and it will turbo up whenever it's needed. So what I got was Intel burn test. Now this will basically test this and make sure that my overclock is stable. Now, it's very advised to run this over multiple hours, like 10 hours plus, to actually run this thing to make sure it's stable. But I've heard things about how it's like, it's okay to run it like an hour and know basically how stable it is. So we're just gonna run this for a little while and see if we get anything to happen. So we're gonna start this right now. And we are burning the CPU basically. As you could tell, our C um, Real temp temperatures are at a load of 97, we're at 99% usage, and our temperatures are at like 84 degrees. They're starting to get very, very hot. Okay, so this is probably going to thermal throttle the way it's looking. Um, we're getting very, very toasty, so I'm not very comfortable with this. Um, yeah. yeah, this is not a normal load. However, this is something that will basically show what this is going to get. So, basically our temps are getting very hot on all the cores. One of the cores is over the, the thermal throttling limit. So, we're kind of just here iffy on this, seeing how this is going to turn out. Um, but I honestly think going back to 4.4 GHz would be the best option. It's, automatic, it's already throttling back to 4.3, as you can tell. It's really not even staying at 4.6. So, basically 4.4 with this cooler... Is the best this thing's gonna get um, because the Hybrid 212 EO is a good cooler. However, it really isn't gonna stand up for this kind of stress. Even though this is a real world stress and I wouldn't worry about it, when I'm doing rendering and stuff, I really don't want this issue happening. So, next, what I'm gonna do is an actual video render test to show you some real world scenarios of what I would be doing running at 4.6 gigahertz. All right, so now for a more real-world test scenario, I'm going to be rendering out a video using the preset that I always use on Sony Vegas Pro 13. 
Now this preset has a constant bit rate of 500 million uh, bits per second and basically it's a constant bit rate so it's going to be very intensive. So what we're going to be doing here is basically rendering out a 1080p render file and this is the same thing I do on all my videos so this is a very real world test. So we're going to do test, let's just call this test video, I can't type today, test video. And we're just gonna render out a video that's already been rendered out. Really doesn't make a difference, but we're just gonna see how this works and render. And now we're gonna whip over our CPU uh, temperature tester to see just how much the temps are gonna go up in this real world scenario. So as of right now, we're at 4.6 gigahertz. We're hovering around 74 degrees, 32 degree, 32% uh, load. It's going up about to 75%. And it's almost looking like this is going to be a pretty solid overclock. The temps are a little bit higher than I want them to be. However, I think this is an okay scenario for what I'm going to be doing. Um, I might tone it back down to 4.4 gigahertz, but 4.6 is a very possible level that I could be running this thing on. So um, it's also something that I could consider is to get a better cooler. If I get a better cooler, like an all-in-one liquid cooler or something, I could run this thing at 4.6 a lot better without it overheating. That's the main factor that's going on here that's really limiting me. So overall, this overclock, you see, as it keeps going up, it's getting hotter and hotter. So this might be a little bit too hot, too high of an overclock. Um, 80 degrees Celsius is like way too high for me. So I'm probably gonna clock it back down to 4.4 gigahertz where it was stable. Um, but basically. That's how you overclock. And the whole scenario is basically just guess and check. So you really just wanna see what you can make happen. Um, it's really not an exact science based on your CPU. As long as it's able to overclock, then you could get good performance out of it. So that's pretty much this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions for people who are doing overclocking, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to see your suggestions. Uh, this i7-2600K is a beast of an overclocker. Its stock speed is 3.4 and I'm able to get up to 4.4 gigahertz, even 4.6 at stable if I had a better cooler on it. But it's a very beast overclocking uh, chip. So. If you're looking for an older chip out there, pick up a 2600K. You can probably get it relatively cheap. So thank you guys again for watching this video. Be sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and check out other content. Have a wonderful day.